I moved to Mexico, giving you a sneak peek into the lives of Americans and Canadians who live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Hola, hola. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Diani Leal, and this series is brought to you by Diani Might Investment Realty, based out of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We are here today with Oksana Fajardo, originally from Lithuania, who's gonna tell us a little bit about her story in coming to BV and what she does here. Oksana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? You know, why did you, when did you come to PV? Why did you come to PV? What made you decide to leave? I know you weren't in Lithuania when you left. You left Lithuania and then you were in Germany or I don't know the exact you know, timeline or anything like that. But why don't you, you know, yeah. tell us more about your story? So, yeah, I'm, I was born in Lithuania, but I lived in many different countries. I lived, spent over 20 years in Germany overall, six years in France, one and a half in Spain, one in Cuba, United States, Belize, whatnot. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a long list. There. It's a long list. I uh, say that because it's actually important and why I came to here, because throughout all my movings, basically throughout my life, I decided that Latin America is the right place for me to be. It's just closest to my culture and closest to my personality, I guess. And I just like it, liked it because I've been traveling so much. And before I moved to Mexico, I was living in Germany again for like three, four years approximately. And then due to some personal circumstances, I decided, well, I need to move again, basically. And of course, COVID happened. And during that time, Mexico was pretty much the only country that was open to even traveling. And since I knew, I've always known that I want to live in Latin America, I decided, okay, it's the time. This is the time. <laughs> let's do it. And which country is it going to be? Well, Mexico is open. Let's go to Mexico then. Wow. So, yeah, that's how I ended up here. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, you were just by yourself? With my son. Oh, okay. I had my, my son was, I think, three years old, approximately. And uh, so I moved here. Yeah, I went through a divorce. His dad stayed in Germany because we, we were not living together anymore anyways. So he absolutely, of course, agreed for the kid to move to Mexico as well. And that's how we came here. Wow, cool. So you've been raising your son here and you've been here for how long? Three years? I think it's been three and a half years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So how, how has your experience been so far with, you know, how was it getting settled? What parts of this town did you decide to live in? And and how did you wind up being, you know, choosing where you live now? It's It's been going great, actually. Like, I, it was not a big shock for me because I have been moving around all my life, pretty much. Like, I literally rerouted myself every three to four years. And so it was nothing new. What was new, of course, doing it with a kid alone. That was a little bit, just a little bit more complicated. And I came to PV first, and I remember just, I didn't know much about PV. I mean, I knew it's, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of expats here. It's close to the sea. It's safe. I knew what the climate was. I knew that there's mountains. This is exactly everything that I've been looking for. And so I just rented out an Airbnb first. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, I did the same thing. Us, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy, you know, exactly. and you can get a discount if you do it by the month. So exactly, you know, yeah, exactly. exactly. But I arrived on the 7th of December and it was pre-Christmas time. So everything was so expensive on the Airbnb. Yeah. And I was like, oh, geez, well, where are we going to go? The only place I could get was like a small room, like not the most luxurious in Mescalas, actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I arrived there and I remember with the, like we landed, I don't know, it was evening. It was already dark. And then, and then I came with an Uber to this place and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I, I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. <laughs> that was because it looked, it looked shady and creepy to me because I've never, you know, seen this area. And I don't know a lot about Mexico. Like, I knew the whole Cancun area as a tourist, as a backpacker. Yeah. You know, I've been to Tulum once as a backpacker and then to Playa del Carmen. I did not, you know, spend time in this here in Mexico, which, mind you, is was okay for me but i was like oh i'm supposed to live here now no way so, <laughs> so just to, to give anybody who's watching a little bit of context 
mezcales, which I've talked about in a couple other videos. That's where I live actually. And it is, you know, it is a very residential area and it's it's fairly new, so it's not very developed. I was getting my, my eyelashes done at the salon in Mescales, and the lady who was doing them, she's about 35. She said that her grandfather is one of the founders of Mescales. So I was like, okay, so that was not that long ago yes. <laughs> that Mescales yes. was founded. So it's a lot of dirt roads and chickens. Roads, yeah. yeah, and so it's funny because it's about 10 minutes from, you know, Bucerias, 10 minutes from Nuevo Vallarta, but it, it's, it's very rural, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you were just like, this is not where I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> and it was dark. It was dark. It was a, comp it's a complete, Puerto Vallarta is a completely different vibe from Cancun. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. I don't even know how to say that, but it's different. Yeah, it so is. So I had no idea. And here I am at some weird house. Long story short, I ended up living there for a year and had tears in my eyes when I had to leave. Oh, so. wow. So it grew on you. I feel the same way. Yeah. I love Mescalas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. grew to love it. That's I funny. mean, I <laughs> did find it took me a couple of months to figure out whether it is actually dangerous or not. Yeah. You know, because I'm a woman walking alone with a kid and nothing ever happened to me. Like, yeah, yes, it's there really are, safe. There are homeless or maybe drugged people walking down the street they have never done anything to me exactly, or not yeah. even spoken badly or nothing like literally no problem at all yeah. at the beginning of the first month i was even afraid to like leave the house in the evening yeah you know? but then then with time i figured this is amazing like it's just it feels safe yeah i mean there are things happening obviously but uh, yeah, so that's the story to Mescalas. Oh, wow. Cool. That's funny. I didn't know you wound up here for a whole year. Yes. So what have you been doing? You've been here for three and a half years. What do you do for work? How have you been supporting yourself and your son? Um, you know, I know you're here by yourself and it's a lot of, you know, as a parent and somebody who's solo parents as well, you know, there's a lot of things to juggle. Yeah. Um, how have you managed to make that work for you guys? So it is a challenge. I must say one of the biggest challenges to moving to probably Latin American countries in general, although Spain, France, I have probably had the same problems as well, is to make a living for yourself because you are in a new country. And even though you speak the language, the cultures are different. The employability is different. The employment uh, conditions, hours and everything are different. So I yeah. can't just go get a job in Mexico. The jobs here are days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. I have a child, but with no child care, with no like, I can't do that. It doesn't so, make sense. It's literally impossible. Yes, it's yeah, impossible. It's, it's, you have to rely and, and, and it's built, you know, the, the system is set up with the understanding that you have family here Correct. to rely on. Cor exactly. And if you're, if you're a foreigner, you don't have you don't that. Have that. Yeah, so yes. you have to think of something else. Exactly. Especially so, if, if you're a parent. Yeah. I do hear that from a especially lot. Especially a single parent. <laughs> especially a single parent, yeah. obviously. So I have a lot of friends also who have the same issue, uh, not with like getting work or stuff, but like making a living that you are actually used to from your home country or from the countries you've been living in previously like I did but then making it from here because I always say as long as you have not found your uh, resources that are generated from or where you live you're still on vacation so yeah it is a challenge for many many people yeah okay so back back to your questions obviously when I immigrated here I did that with my savings because I also received the visa based on savings there's several options to receive a visa so I lived off of my savings for a very long time actually and what did you do b b back before home? Before that, yeah. I was an HR professional. I was working in uh, big corporations in HR development. And oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I saved up all that money pretty much. And, um, so and it was like almost like early retirement, but you're like, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's it. So, but then of course, obviously like you have to find something and, um, through funny, happy coincidences i got into the yacht industry here because obviously puerto Vallarta is a very touristy place and you either do something with restaurants or with real estate or with tours here so i got into the yacht industry and uh, got to know some amazing people in there and uh, i am running to yacht chartering agency here in puerto vallarta oh wow that's amazing and what a cool niche to get into because you know everybody's like real estate or tourism but the yacht business seems really interesting can you tell us a little bit more about boat and bay 
Yes. So Bolton Bay has over 60 yachts uh, in their catalog available for chartering here at Puerto, Puerto Vallarta. Um, this is all types of yachts and boats. It's from pangas to really, really luxurious yachts. Um, the minimum chartering time is usually four hours and goes up to six or even sometimes eight hours. Oh, wow. So Puerto Vallarta is a very, very famous actually yachting and chartering destinations because we have this gorgeous bay here. And there's also a lot of places to go. Yes. You know, there's so many islands and even areas that aren't accessible that you need a boat to get to, like Mixto exactly. and Yalapa and places like that. But then there's all these islands. I mean, like a dream for people who, you know, love boats, who want to go on boats. Absolutely. You know, yeah. There's... Yeah. There's so many hidden beaches here also, like you say, that are only accessible via yacht, actually. Yeah. Not, not oh, just by a yacht area. specifically. Yes. Really? By yacht or boat, via water, actually. Yeah, there's okay, a lot yeah. of beaches that you can't access through the jungle actually or i mean maybe you could with a lot of adventurous spirit yeah <laughs> so this is the good thing about it yeah and we have los arcos which is like an amazing natural preserve people love going there and taking pictures and snorkeling we have mahawitas beach which is amazing for snorkeling it's pretty calm water it's also very good to go with kids there's also beaches where you can hang out just at the restaurants, for example, amazing restaurants like Las Animas and Yalapa for seafood. Just, just go with your yacht, get down on the beach, enjoy the restaurant for an hour or two, and then go back on your yacht and go cruising and snorkeling and come back close to the Malacon. I mean, this, yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very beautiful destination. Oh my God, this sounds amazing. I want to go on a yacht right now. Please come, let's go. <laughs> Seriously, oh God. So if somebody's watching this and they say, you know, I'm actually going to Puerto Vallarta next week and, you know, I'd like to charter a yacht for a day just to kind of get a feel for Boat and Bay, how would they find you? So if you just would like to charter a yacht, please go on www.boatandbay.com. There's all types of yachts listed there, but also the contact information. Just contact us, get in touch with us and let us know the dates that you would like to go and some ideas maybe that you have for your charter, because many people also like to celebrate their birthdays, wedding anniversaries, even true weddings or proposals on a yacht. Let us know what you want, what you would like to do, and we will choose the perfect yacht for you, actually. Oh, so it's like fully customized, really. Fully customized, exactly. Some people just want to go snorkeling. Some people want to go snorkeling with kids. Actually, I do recommend some specific yachts to go with kids because they're either more stable or they have like wider, what is it called? Pasillo in um, English. Walkway. Walkways, like, yeah. yeah, just like, or anti slip or something like that. So, yeah, it really depends on the group or on the people that want to go. So, we can choose the perfect thing for you for your celebration or just touring around the bay because yeah, a lot of the bigger boats that you can go on just for the day with virus adventures or something there you really can't bring kids on those so if you have small children your yeah. only option especially with whale watching and things yes. like that yeah you yes. really would want to charter a private yeah boat. there's yeah. there's pros and cons to ticketed uh yacht chartering um you know trips obviously but if you want if you have if you want some more privacy or if you have a specific event that you would like to celebrate on board or if you have kids or elderly people definitely better to hire a private charter even and also the bigger the group the cheaper it's going to be for everybody so yeah. definitely recommend hiring a private charter in those cases yeah oh cool well that's that's amazing well thank you yeah i mean obviously mexico is just so rich of opportunities and this is one thing that i love about being here is just everything feels possible here you know like there's just industries here opening up that are not you know, available in other colder climate countries, for example. So yeah, is... and I think this is something that we've talked about a lot with this interview series of people moving to Mexico and how you can make that lifestyle work for you. And you know, what we've talked about today also, and you've addressed is the fact that getting a full time job might not really be your best option. And for a lot isn't feasible at all. So, you know, you kind of have to think outside of the box a little bit and in, in what you're going to do. But starting a business is a really great option here in Puerto Vallarta. And there are a lot of pockets and niches and areas that just aren't really built on and lots of needs that you can recognize within the community that need to be addressed. And that can be a yeah. great opportunity to kind of, you know, to, to get your footing here. Obviously, yeah. Unless you're retired and you're just moving here, in which case you can just yacht all day and... <laughs> and live in your condo by the beach. 
But anyway, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. I think we're we're just about to, you know, wrap up and everything. But I did want to have a couple questions that I ask everybody at the end of these interviews. So one is what do you miss the most about back home? I know you've traveled a lot, so I don't know back home. Yeah, I like... don't have a back home. That's my problem. I don't really have a home, but maybe compared to where I've been before. Yeah, like what do you miss the most about non-Mexico? Non-Mexico, I <laughs> yeah. guess. Yeah. You know what I miss from Germany? What? I do miss access to cheap products. Like things that are pretty expensive here, oh, like yeah. imported mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Or in Germany, there's like those small shops that are called DM, for example, and they sell just like shampoos, creams. There's like for really cheap, and there's like 20, 30 of them, you know, yeah. like different brands, but like really high quality and really not, not expensive. That's what I miss actually, because variety. The variety, yeah. and the, it's like economically accessible. But yeah. actually, I have this in all. American countries like North and uh, Central American, they don't have these shops here that they have in Germany. Like you have to buy if you want a cream, you go to I don't know Walmart, right? Or, yeah, or yeah. Costco. So, but in, I miss I miss those DM small shops. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I miss that actually. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing Just kidding. Else. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you miss the least, actually? What I miss the least: the bad weather and the bad moods. Yeah. Oh, the bad moods. Yeah, the bad yeah. moods. I think it applies to many countries that are cold in climate. Yeah. I, I personally believe that us people who are living in cold climates with constantly having clouds over our heads, we're low-key depressed. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Constantly depressed. For like depression. a large portion of yeah. the year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Vitamin D missing and just depression. Just like if, if you never go outside. Never, yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing. And the social life is also dictated a lot by the climate, actually. Like yeah. If it's cloudy, raining, and cold, you don't go want outside. to go out and, you know, socialize. It's true. As much. Yeah, you're just like, I'm just, I'm, I just want to be home. Exactly. I <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Like we had, it was pretty cloudy yesterday. So I was like, oh, let's just leave. But imagine, imagine having that, let's just sleep like 360 days a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't miss that. And one of the it's reasons true. why I moved here and why I just feel so much more alive life here yeah. I, I literally feel alive and yeah i love this country yeah yeah so that that was leads me to my next question which is what is your favorite thing about puerto vallarta freedom <laughs> freedom has its pros and cons it's you know the cons are it's not regulated like you know if the neighbors are blasting super loud music and are being absolutely inconsiderate, there's not much you can do here in Mexico. <laughs> That's true. Other than try to, you know, I don't know, whatever, whatever is going to help you. Deal with it. Deal with it. Yeah. In Germany, it's going to be regulated this until this time. You can't, you know, you can't even mow your uh, law. Uh, mow your lawn. Mow yeah. your, uh-huh. So it's all regulated, but then it also takes away your freedom. So I do appreciate the freedom here because yeah. I'd rather have it less regulated, but then more freedom. I'm willing to sacrifice the regu regulations. Yeah. yeah. I mean, until a certain until point, a certain you point. don't want an <laughs> I don't want absolute chaos. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah, there's. I feel like there's a fair amount of order also, you know. Yes. It's like to find this fine line between order, regulation, and freedom is, I think it's difficult, but... For right now, for my personality and for my needs in Mexico, it's perfect. Like, I do yeah. appreciate the freedom. And another thing, especially with kids, you know, also a reason why I moved to Latin America is because there's more warmth, human warmth. Yeah. So just kids are just more inclusive. Everybody's playing with everybody. And parents are paying attention to nobody being you know, excluded or like being upset. Yeah. Like if, let's just say we have a play date and a couple of moms meet with our kids and three of those kids play together and the fourth is out. Like the moms are going to be like, you guys, you three kids, you need to play with that girl. Like she needs to be included, right? Yeah. This is something that's not present like in Germany, for example. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be like, well, just, you know. Yeah, whatever kids. Whatever, yeah, yeah let them like, it's not our kid. Yeah. And people here are more inclusive like that. And just kids are also like, and adults as well, like just easier to, to get friends actually, yeah. you know, to make friends and to socialize, to talk to people. Yeah. Does your son like it here? 
my son loves it here yes i mean obviously he was still pretty young when he arrived right yeah he still does remember things from germany really he, yeah he misses his toys and <laughs> yeah, you know the material stuff yeah. but he loves it here i i can see that my son is happy yeah, yeah. all right cool well you know is, is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up if you have any questions about moving here you know being multicultural or yachts which is my specialty and passion here then please feel free to reach out all right and also, if you do like the video, if you like the content, likes are very helpful for us. Make sure to comment if you have any questions about everything that we covered or you would like any more information. And please subscribe if you haven't yet. And thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you. Thank you so much, Yanni. All right.